Okay, now we've been thinking about functions for a while. You know, the idea of you have f of x equals something, and you could plug something in for x, and then something else would come out for y. For example, a real quickie example would be something like f of x equals 2 to the x. And if you plug a number in here, I just plug in for x, and I'd see what it equals. And we're on our way. Great. Now, there are times when, in fact, I want to restrict the numbers that I'm plugging in. I want to restrict sometimes what's called the, the domain to just the counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. For example, if I did that, I could say f of 1, and that would be 2 to the 1. I could say f of 2, and that would be 2 to the 2. I could say f of 3 in this example, and I'd see 2 to the 3. And you can compute these things, 2, 4, and 8, and so forth. Now, when I have functions that I just want to restrict the values I plug in to be the counting numbers, we actually call such things sequences. And we denote them in sort of a funny way. And let me show you the funny way that we denote them. So these are really sequences. And a sequence is just a function where I'm just going to plug in, I'm just going to plug in natural numbers. Instead of writing it like this, I can write it like this. A sub n, this is new notation, equals 2 to the n. And that is actually saying the same thing as this, but the notation is all new. So I want to go through this with you really slowly. See here, this is the variable. And the f tells me that this is like the map. And the map is the 2 to the power x. And x is the variable. Here, to translate that, a is sort of like the f here. a is telling me that this is the 2 to a power thing. And this little index here, this n, represents the variable. So for example, if I plug in a natural number in for n, n for natural number, then I would plug that value in here. So the analog of this statement would be a sub 1. That means let n equal 1. Just like here, I'm saying let x equal 1. And the answer would be 2 to the 1. Wherever I see n, I replace that 1 in for the n's. So I see 1 here, n, I put it here. a sub 2 would equal 2 to the 2. a sub 3 would equal 2 cubed, and so forth. So this is a way of me to, for me to describe a function, where the function now is only going to take on, I'm only going to plug in values that are counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 so forth. And this is how it looks. So these three things are the exact same thing as these three things here, but it's a different notation. And the reason why we like this notation is because just by indexing them, and now it, they come in an order. There's a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, just like the counting numbers come in order. And I can see that order by listing them as a little subscript here. Whereas here, it's hard to write all that stuff with the parentheses and everything. I can just restrict myself to this, to this language. So let's take a look at some examples just using the notation, just using the notation. So it's sort of like learning a new language, but once you get into it, you'll be speaking it really fluently. So for example, let's take a look at this sequence. The sequence defined by a sub n equals n minus 2 all divided by n. Now that's the rule. You could think of that like a function. It would be like f of x equals x minus 2 all over x. But now let's see if we can write down the first few terms in this sequence. Since the natural numbers come in a particular order, 1, 2, 3, and so forth, the sequence comes in a particular order. a1 would equal what I get when I plug in 1 for n. So I'd have 1 minus 2 over 1, which equals negative 1. So the first term in my sequence is negative 1. What's a sub 2? a sub 2, I plug in 2 for n, so I see 2 minus 2 over 2. And what does that equal? Well, that equals 0. What about a sub 3? Well, wherever I see an n, I'm now going to plug in 3. So I see 3 minus 2 over 3, which equals 1 third. And you can keep doing this. For example, what is the 11th term? I can fast forward right to the 11th term because I'm just saying n is 11. So this would be 11 minus 2 all over 11, which equals what? Well, 11 minus 2 is what? That's like a 9 over 11. So the 11th term in this sequence is actually 9 elevenths. Do you see how I'm evaluating the terms by just plugging in 
the appropriate value for n into this thing. It's just like a function, just written differently. and allows me to go through and look at these things.